Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Francesco, and this is Fab City Hub Voices podcast. Uh, this event is dedicated to those of you who want to learn more about creative and productive hubs. Maybe you have heard um, some concepts like third space, third place, or even hybrid space, or maybe you are familiar or you heard at some point about the Fab City movement. This is uh, an event dedicated to, to those of you who want to learn more about such concepts. No specific prior knowledge is required, so uh, feel free also to uh, uh, think about any question you may have about hubs, creative hubs, uh, fab city hubs, all these concepts that may be uh, may seem uh, some uh, somehow vague. We are trying to make them uh, a bit more concrete and specific during this event. Fab City Hub Voices is a series of webinars that uh, uh, are dedicated to learn about specific challenge that you will face if you decide at some point to launch a hub in your city, in your local context. And it's also dedicated to understand all the opportunities that are opening up to local ecosystem when those apps are launched uh, in a city or in a specific territory. The program is produced by Volumes. Volumes is a studio based in Paris, specialized in social innovation. I'm Francesco, the founder and director of the company. And we started about uh, eight years ago. Uh, and we have uh, a long history in uh, creating and operating uh, hubs uh, especially in Paris, now also in other location in France and starting to develop in other venues uh, in Europe now. This initiative, so this podcast uh, and these events are part of a European project called Centrino, uh, in which Volume is supporting the creation and the emergence of nine Fab City Hubs in nine different cities of Europe. We just opened the first Fab City Hub uh, of, in the world, <laughs> proudly in Paris in November 2022. And we are now uh, supporting uh, other cities, uh, among which Amsterdam, which is our guest today, uh, to launch similar initiative. But before I go on, I, the most important part uh, is uh, of this event are our guests. So I want to introduce Thieu and Bono. So uh, Thieu, if you can say hello, uh, Thieu is a designer. Hi and, uh, hey, hi Thieu. Uh, uh, so Thieu works at VAG Future Lab, uh, spe specifically on maker education, sustainable cities. And he also runs his own design studio where he explore arts and science, nature and media, working on uh, also practical performative experiments and exploring themes such as circular sanitation. Definitely, I'm not an expert in this. Maybe we will hear more about that during the presentation, but also working on topics such as food systems and ecological space exploration. And Bono, uh, Bono Siebeling, I hope uh, uh, I'm not uh, messing up the name, uh, works as cultural programmer at Packhouse the Zweiger a very cool venue in Amsterdam, uh, which I recently visited, by the way. Um, so uh, uh, it is a platform for social innovation. And uh, Bono, in the urban planning team, creates these connections and network be between different stakeholders and actors that are participating in urban development project in Amsterdam. Specifically, he organizes panel discussion and awareness events for different public uh, and focusing on social implication on how to change uh, physically the, the environment of the city and also exploring how these changes uh, can or will affect the everyday experience of the residents, of the neighborhood, et cetera. And maybe it's important to mention that Bono has a background in social science and urban geography. Thank you very much, Bono and Thieu, for being with us. Um, how is the weather in Amsterdam today? Not too bad, actually. It's kind of sunny. It's, it feels like spring today. Great. Yeah, and Thieu, you are also speaking from Amsterdam, but for a different from a different location, right? Clear skies from here. I'm looking at a new 
big ship that has come in uh, at the harbor to I think, be repaired. So that's quite yeah. interesting. Wow, looks amazing. We are, uh, I am speaking from Italy today, uh, even if, as I mentioned, volume is based in Paris. Um, and uh, Carlotta will be uh, speaking with us uh, today, part of the team. Uh, but uh, I will come to her in a, in a while. Before I introduce specifically Carlotta, I want to remind some uh, practical um, information about these events. So uh, first of all, this event is public. So we have a wide audience of participants that are not familiar with the Fab City Hubs or Creative Hubs. Uh, or with the Centrino project, uh, the, 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 the event is open to everyone. Uh, and also I want to uh, remind to the audience, uh, I can see uh, Asna, Wolf, Panos, some of the participants, uh, that uh, this event is dedicated also to your questions. So please uh, note down in the chat uh, when questions uh, may uh, arise we will make uh, the effort to uh, list them and try to answer them with the help of our guests today. So the project, the, the, sorry, the event is recorded. So it's available now live, but it will be also published in a few days on the Centrino project website and also on the volume podcast channel that we just launched a few months ago. And now, as I mentioned before, Carlotta, uh, I wanted to introduce you because you will be uh, the, the main person also facilitating the debate after the presentation of uh, Amsterdam. Carlotta, you work uh, since the beginning of Centrino at Volumes. You are uh, a project manager uh, and in charge of uh, research projects at Volumes specifically. And uh, you spend quite uh, uh, a lot of time exploring and researching in the first year of the project, the history and typology of hubs in Europe. And so you have you are the, the expert uh, in the room about, about the, the evolution of hubs. And uh, this is why I will invite you to take care of uh, a challenge a little bit, the presentation of Thieu and Bono. Uh, maybe um, uh, asking some uh, specific question, uh, if that's okay for you. How are you, Carlotta, today? And how is Hello. the weather in Paris, by the way? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, the weather in Paris is super nice. I mean, it's changing, but uh, as uh, Thieu said, or Bono, I don't remember, the, the spring is coming. I'm feeling this uh, good energy. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to be here and I already prepared some triggering questions, <laughs> but, but I'm uh, eager to hear. No, triggering because maybe my role is um, uh, try to merge uh, what is the, the theory and what I've been studying with the, the, those that are practically doing this and the challenge they are encountering and how we can extract the good practices, uh, tools uh, and things to be transferred to someone else than want to replicate. So, yeah, I will. Uh... Yeah. As Carlotta is saying, this event is also dedicated to uh, give uh, inspiration to other peoples that are not part of the nine uh, cities uh, currently involved in the project that would like to uh, start a Fab City Hub in their city. We are constantly, we've been constantly receiving requests uh, about Fab City Hubs in other cities, and this is one of the reasons why we decided to start such events. So, Thieu and Bono, now uh, the floor is yours. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, say a few words if you want about you, but also feel free to share the screen if you want to share a presentation while you are speaking. And uh, especially we are uh, eager to learn about how Amsterdam is dealing with uh, all the challenges that are you know, involved when you try to have an impact, have a space, in the physical environment. And also we may uh, be interested in hearing more about uh, the multiple uh, physical space model that you are exploring. But uh, let's dive in the presentation and then we can uh, uh, go uh, to more specific question after the, the presentation itself. So floor is yours. Super, I will share my screen and open up the presentation for you all. 
I think we're visible now. Yeah, perfect. Um, then uh, Bono, you can take it away. Oh. Yeah, I can. Uh, I'm also hearable. Yeah, okay. Uh, I can. Yeah, I can start. Uh, I'll just first give a brief uh, explanation of what we do as uh, in in our pilot or like in our city in general, and then we, me and Che, will uh, each. Uh, talk about the different aspects that we're uh, working on within uh, the project. So uh, at first, uh, we in Amsterdam were working uh, as three uh, organizations. We're working on uh, realizing, uh, well, a sort of distributed Fab City uh, hub. It's it's all over the place, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, so it's a co collaboration between the Hout and Meubilians College, which is the uh, local like school for uh, more like a f a practical, um, like vocational uh, education, Waag, as we just talked about, uh, and Pak uh, and I'm the representative uh, of that. Um, yes, next one, Joe. So um, just to like explain a little bit what we're doing in our specific project, we're um, actually focusing on one area in Amsterdam, which is uh, the area of Amsterdam Noord above the water. Maybe people who have been to Amsterdam know this area. And in this area specifically, we have, we see that there are still a lot of uh, uh, workshops, a lot of like uh, uh, like carpenters, like uh, ship wharves, like different types of more practical um, uh, um, jobs uh, and workshops uh, present. So we decided to focus on on this area. The thing is, Amsterdam uh, has um, a um, Amsterdam has the goal to in 2030, I think, to have a 50 percent. A circular circular economy and in 2050 100 percent circular economy so this very so that does the city of amsterdam is really trying to work on its circularity and it's actually going uh putting very high uh goals for itself for this we need these local um workshops and local makers to contribute to local production and to uh, uh circular uh production so we decided to really focus on the existing workshops and existing uh, makers that are already present and this area in north is kind of representative um of uh yeah of like the the processes that are happening to amsterdam because they're currently being kind of pushed out of the the city or being pushed to the edges of the city because it's simply too expensive in the central areas to have uh, a lot of space because amsterdam is very crowded and condensed and so it's like there's not a lot of space for uh for for these places um next And also, Joe, just add to me yeah, if I'm forgetting mm -hmm. something. Um, yeah, so like I think what what yeah what I just uh, said. So we for the specific Centrino project, but it relates to like the more broader thing that we're doing. We're starting from the base of trying to further circularity for makers in Amsterdam Nord because we yeah the the base of it is that we just try to create the self sustaining and circular city and. In Amsterdam specifically, we've decided to focus on different aspects. So we're not really trying to create one centralized uh, hub because we sense that already the city has a very scattered and distributed distributed uh, uh, economy. And like because of the scarce uh, space, like we see that everything, uh, like everyone is kind of working in temporary spaces, and um, it's difficult to like really settle and uh, in in one place. So we decided to like kind of like embody and and embrace this approach, and also work on a more distributed approach to the Fab City uh, hubs. So we we are in different parts of the city. That's maybe good to mention. In this, we're trying to focus on like some five main goals. So we're trying to uh, create a policy lobby for the municipality to uh, spend more like to have more attention to these makers. And the fact that they're uh, leaving the city, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. We're focusing on education programs, so the Centrino schools. Joe will uh, say a bit more about how we're doing that. Uh, we're trying to map the makers to like kind of also create. It kind of falls under the same category as the visibility of makers. So we're trying to like really make clear to the city that these uh, uh, these 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 jobs and these workshops and these makers are a very uh, essential part of the the city. So uh, for that, we need to create first a sense of uh, visibility and yeah, strengthening of a network of makers that also kind of falls under this. So it's like really trying to create a strong body to really assure that we're, uh, to like make clear that we're, um, that these makers are an essential part of the city. Um, next. Yes, so, oh yeah, this is the 
maybe Joe, you can uh, add to this. I, I can take it up. So with these goals, we uh, identified a couple of activities and things we want to highlight in this presentation to showcase how we're doing that. So on the visibility, on that policy lobby and on education. And we'll take you through that now to showcase how is that working uh, in the real world. Um, and one of the things we do on that visibility is exhibitions and events. So we organize an exhibition at Museum Amsterdam Noord, a traveling exhibition that then also moved to Pakhuis de Zwijger and the Wood and Furniture College to really showcase, okay, who are we talking about in the breadth of makers from shoemakers to goldsmiths to uh, electricians and anything in between to really show, okay, if we're talking about makers and makers of the future, we need to uh, tell their stories, uh, show their portraits, show their hand and show what they're doing. And around these events, we're also organizing a lot of or around these exhibitions, we're also organizing a lot of events. So we're doing uh, mapping workshops, we're doing practical workshops for kids. And interestingly, every month we try to organize a open workspace evening in which we open the door for a different uh, maker space and invite other makers and people that are interested in making to uh, come talk about a certain theme. It can be circularity, it can be uh, how you organize your space or how you start up a collective and in this way, we're trying to connect makers to each other and showcase the visibility of these makers. Um, so that's the, the, the community and visible part. And here you see uh, the expo in Amsterdam Noord. And interestingly, the expo could travel and continue onto, onto other spaces built by our local makers themselves. And this is an example of these uh, open workshop evenings in which we're showcasing different workshops and talking about what is needed. This is the shared works, uh, workshop space of Openbergplatz in Oost. Um, then the lobby part, and then uh, I'll give it to you, Bono. Yes, so um, the lobby part is specifically also where my, the organization Pakhuis de Zwijger comes in, as, as uh, um, Francesco, Francesco just said, that Pakhuis de Zwijger is like a cultural center, and I organize panel discussions and debates there. So it kind of seems to be a bit far away from the general goals of the, of the project, but then I think we can use our platform to create this lobby and really make clear to the city that there's a big urgency to keep these makers inside uh, the city boundaries and not have them pushed away to other municipalities or other places for the various goals that we just identified. So what did we do? Uh, we set up like a big variety. Well, for, let's first talk maybe about the other parts and then I'll come to the events. So this piece that you see here, that's uh, written actually by Cho and, and Anna from, from Waag. Uh, they decided to uh, use the local newspaper to send an opinion piece uh, where they really show the urgency and the, the necessity of the makers in the city, what we uh, just discussed. Uh, so this was already one way to like kind of show to the greater public of Amsterdam that uh, we need to like start thinking about these, uh, this, this community. And then the next one. Yeah, so this is the also made by Waag. This is the uh, Kumu map uh, in which uh, we can see how a, a lot of uh, workshops and makers in the uh, pilot area in North will soon disappear. And maybe, Joe, you can click on it and then it opens the page. And see, we're going to do a quick switch like yeah. this. And so it's an interactive it map. Um, where uh, the idea is that we, we we can really visualize in a way how uh, the local workshops are supposed like according to their contracts are supposed to leave within the next two five or like ten years, um, and this was really to make it super visible to policymakers or other stakeholders what is currently happening because we can talk about it but then sometimes we need that vis vi like visual input to like really uh um understand what 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 the problem is so maybe we can briefly so like right now this these are all the the, the places that were interviewed all the places that were visited by by the intern of Waag. and then now we're pressing the places that are leaving after 22 23 24 25 and then slowly we see that a lot of these places are disappearing according to their current contracts or they're being pushed out and they find a new place so like this is really a way for the lobby to like make it clear. And we've all already gotten some feedback that a lot of policymakers and, and also even politicians had seen this and they're like, wow, okay, this really made an impact on me and made me understand what the matter is right now. 
this map is uh, available online to check out and to to see. So uh, uh, I invite you to parse through it and to really check for yourself how that influences uh, uh, making in Amsterdam now and in the future. Then I'll exactly. go back to our, share the link uh, in the chat, maybe too after. Sure, I will uh, share share the link and then thank you for back in the presentation. Can you see my screen? Uh, briefly stopped. Oh, that is. Then we'll reshare. Yeah, please. Always nice to have. Yeah, yeah it's fine. And, and we're going to go full screen again, and we're back in the presentation. Yes. So yeah, what I just said, uh, the events that we organized at Pakhuis Zwijger had as a main goal to like also bring together these different communities, but then also like start this lobby. So we did a well in total six events. This is only at Pakhuis Zwijger because we also did, as Joe said, some events at Houten Meubileumskollege and Waag. So like monthly, there is actually something that makers can go to or other interested stakeholders. But this is specifically the public events that we created at Pakhuis that are also open for the general public to visit for free. Um, so yeah, we did from October 2020, first, uh, 21 till uh, yeah, upcoming May, where we did a, a series of events and maybe we can go to the goals. So yeah, the purpose of these events in this, in this lobbying exercise was to, first of all, raise awareness. Huh? It was very necessary two years ago to like first, uh, like generally uh, uh, address this issue because it's not in, in Amsterdam, the debate's very dictated by the lack of housing that's currently present. And actually the, the, the more, the workshops in the other space are kind of forgotten in this uh, public uh, discussion. So it was first raising awareness, then identifying a direction and like, how to, do we organize a lobby? This has been something that we've been working on in the last months getting together a lot of uh, uh, makers first uh, in a brainstorm to really state their urgencies and to to ask what they would need to like have their place in the city more sustainably. And then also getting together policymakers to really identify what are some of the entrances in the current policy where we could identify that we could uh, uh, find ways from the city government together with stakeholders to offer affordable and big enough places for the makers that are in need right now so yeah in that way we're trying to prepare for the future and that's the event that's coming in may where we're really going to try to focus on the uh, city council so the politicians who can actually have a can make a difference um so we're trying to already prepare for the future after the the pilot uh, period because uh, that will be in a year or something uh, that the project's over but we try to keep our impact for after so we're trying to really evoke a little change right now in the city politics to think about this topic and really try to uh, think of new ways to go about it. And then I think we had some pictures. Uh, so this is the first event made in Amsterdam. So this was generally just raising awareness and also introducing the Centrino project. Here you see our moderator, Thomas, who was uh, used to be in a project and two local, uh, uh, like one person is a shoemaker and the other person works at a ship uh, uh, wharf uh, company. <laughs> Uh, and the next one, this was Marktplatz or the Werkplatz. This was last uh, September. And it was more specifically about making space uh, in the city. So we noticed that it's kind of like a, a question of space. And we addressed that in this uh, event. And we see, you see that there are a lot of people showing up. And then here, the next one you see, there you see Joe. Joe moderated this event. Uh, next to him, uh, a, a carpenter, a ship uh, worker, a... Um, uh, a furniture maker, well, a lot of different uh, people from uh, yeah from the makers community came together to really voice their urgencies, and Joe moderated it as if he had been doing this for 15 years already. So it was great, um, and I think that was my part. Yeah, and then the last part uh, in this three of uh, visibility, community, uh, lobbying, and then the education part is we're really focusing on how do we provide access for the future generations on uh, practical education. So uh, at WAG, we're working with uh, uh, the local libraries on the Maatplatz, but what we're also doing here is uh, having a circular course with 13 schools and 800 plus students to really focus on how can you uh, see what kind of circularity is in your neighborhood and take up a practical education approach an open schooling approach to uh, a course. So these students worked with an assignment to find makers in their local neighborhood, work with them and 
uh, look for uh, sustainable solutions in that. Of course, the solution themselves are not the important part, but the connection to making and practical education is very important in that. The 11th of May, we're showcasing their results uh, at the Wooden Furniture College and uh, talking with the students and with these uh, high schoolers there. Um, that's a part of what we're doing. And education also comes to providing space. So the Waag Fab Lab and the HMC Lab are opening up as spaces to try new tools and to try the mostly expensive machines that are really expensive if you have to buy them as a starting maker. But there you can try them and use them to prototype. <laughs> so in this part, we're really trying to provide the skills, the knowledge, and the idea that making or a practical uh, vocation is important also for the future. So these are the elements we wanted to highlight for you in this uh, presentation. And then I've come to the end and I'll uh, stop sharing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thieu and Bono. Uh, don't forget, Thieu, if you can, uh, to share the link uh, uh, to the Kumu map so we can also share it in the chat. Uh, thanks for the, the presentation. Um, so uh, now the idea would be uh, to uh, dive deep into some specific aspects of uh, uh, your experience in Amsterdam, also regarding to some uh, of the most uh, pressing uh, problematic of challenge that usually we face when we want to activate, uh, you know, hubs or in general, but also specifically Fab City Hubs. I know that Carlotta has some questions prepared, but uh, in the meantime, I want to remind again participants uh, to post their question in the chat or in the question and answer uh, box as you prefer. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't be shy. There is no stupid question, uh, as we used to say always. Uh, if you want uh, to uh, ask Bono to, or us, about anything that could go from very, very practical question like uh, how uh, to deal with uh, you know, practical management of hubs, but also more theoretical when it comes to social innovation and urban planning. Don't miss the opportunity. Uh, feel free to ask and we will be glad to facilitate the, a debate or an answer to those questions. Uh, so maybe I, I would say that now the floor is to Carlotta, if you want to start with uh, some question. I have noted down something too, but I will leave mine for uh, a second uh, a second phase maybe. So Carlotta, floor to you. Yeah. Thanks, Francesco. Thanks, Thieu and Bono. Uh, very um, insightful presentation. Um, I think uh, I wanted to go directly to the first question that is about the specificity, the spatial specificity of your hub, which is distributed, mm -hmm. and which I think is super interesting for the reason you mentioned, for um, keep caring um, heritage that exists of space and people that work on those spaces. At the same time, I think is a sort of challenge uh, for someone that comes from the external, someone that is not part, for example, of your organization or uh, the environment of, uh, of Amsterdam, this neighborhood, and to uh, grasp the, um, the activities that you are doing, uh, the, um, this, uh, to, to grasp this distributedness, at the same time understand the, um, the activities that you are doing. Um, I don't know if, it, if my question is clear. How would you um, answer to someone that approach you and say, "How can I see the Fab City, the distributed Fab City apps?" This maybe is a more direct question to answer to a challenge that is the distributedness of your hub. I think it's a very good question. What what we mostly do is we try to have a regularity in events that you can attach to. And uh, in this year, we're really trying to open up also the HMC lab and the FAP lab of Waag as points of contact. Uh, so the, it is uh, less based on uh, a singular space, but we're really trying to see, okay, which spaces are have already existed in, in Amsterdam and can we support and be part of this network? You see that there's a lot of interesting either open spaces or manufacturing spaces that are still there and need that support. So uh, uh, we're focusing on the, the regularity of events and having these open doors. Uh, 
but yeah that's uh, and maybe also good to say that uh, so like maybe it also depends maybe a bit on the target group right so if there's if you would refer to like uh, people working in the field and then if they're maybe not uh, aware of like what's happening uh, in Amsterdam and they see this distributedness and maybe they get confused I think part of the events is also to create more of a network um, like more of like a yeah like a social network between these places so it's like almost the space also goes in the network so if you the idea is that if you you could join uh, you could be in any part of the city but then if there's a strong uh, unity of, of of the community then you could kind of also be part of that so you could be introduced to uh to the yeah to the bigger network yeah actually a reflection that i had is a um, is a thought that i have while you were um, exposing the activities is that the three part the three main partners that they are involved act as a glue of all these uh, different activities that are um, happening in the city and uh, you are acting as someone that is trying to collecting uh, those activities and give voice and visibility to them. I don't know if Francesco has, he has raised yeah. his hand, yeah, so I maybe he's a, he has yeah, a question I, related. Yeah, I wanted to uh, say two things. The first is a, a small uh, disclaimer, technical disclaimer, uh, because the, the chat for some reason is not uh, enabled. I don't know why, maybe it's a technical issue, but so, which means don't uh, be shy in any case to ask questions because you can use the question and answer pool, which is even better to organize the question. And I already see uh, some uh, questions arriving. So use the question and answer um, uh, as the chat is not working. Yeah, I wanted to follow up about this question uh, about uh, running uh, distributed events. Uh, I have some experience uh, in Paris uh, before opening the Fab City Hub in the previous year when the Fab City initiative was very in its early stages. We didn't have uh, a dedicated venue and uh, our aim was, uh, as I guess it's your case too, to connect different uh, you know, venues uh, in different areas of the cities. Uh, of people, um, you know, working on similar topic, but never uh, being able to interact, uh, you know, uh, so these events were working to connect, no, I, I think it's very similar to what you're doing. Uh, my question goes, uh, it's very detailed, but uh, it's very practical, I think it's good to give practice insights, because I, I was uh, interested to see the picture with the track, uh, uh, of you, uh, you know, moving things around in the city. And uh, my experience also tells me that uh, the logistic, you know, is can be very complicated when you run events every time in a different venue, you don't find, I don't know, the cable of the video projector, or you don't know how to enter, or you always have uh, tons of uh, stupid, but very relevant uh, small problems. I would be curious to know if you have uh, any, I don't know, tips on how to deal with this. I, I'm hearing about the, 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 the what you was mentioning about the regularity of events. I think this is one tips, but do you have any specific learnings or uh, strategies to deal with these, you know, problems that are uh, appearing when you always go to a different venue? Do you have a documentation in place? Anything to share about this? It's uh, the first one is em embrace inconvenience. So the, the 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 positives of going to a very specific space and a new space is always better than having a weird light that doesn't work. So that it's always also building some space to check it out. And actually, what's fun about these open workshop evenings we have is the spaces are very very well suited for sound for quite some people and just gathering. So we try to keep it just open the doors. We have a couple of mobile speakers that we sometimes use if we want to have uh, amplified voices and uh, we figure stuff out on the day. So it's about flexibility and about uh, embracing if something goes wrong. Um, as for tips, uh, I think I think that- I That would be in line with what you say, Joe, just trying to make use of the resources available on the place itself, instead of like trying to have this whole idea of how you want to organize it, but maybe just- uh see what you have and then work with that. Okay, uh, Carlotta, before I leave you back the floor, uh, I'm taking this chance of the of, of this conversation 
to connect with the uh, questions that I can see in the question and answer poll, which is related to this. Katarina is asking, uh, I think you're partially answered, what will be your approach to physical space in general? Uh, if you plan at some point to have a dedicated space called Fab City Hub, or if you are willing to keep this distributed in multiple location. Uh, so if you can uh, please uh, mm, yeah. Just a little bit on that. Also, uh, maybe you can say a few words about the lobby part, which is uh, very interesting to me. I would like to understand if this is more a general awareness activity that you are taking on, or if you are planning to have specific objective in terms of access to uh, cheap uh, real estate space, etc. If you have any specifics to, to share about this, I think it would be very helpful. Yeah, I think I can share something about the physical space and then I'll give it to Bono for the lobby. Um, in essence, we're really trying to be a physical space at the moment, but to have that in <clears throat> multiple locations. So with the spaces of Waag and HMC, providing this access to machinery and education and possibility of multiple uh, spaces that connect to that from partners, we're really building that out as a physical space, but trying to not make something new or redo something that a lot of people in Amsterdam are already doing quite well, but attaching them to them is our physical approach. And we're organizations that really work on prototyping and making uh, experiments and research. So this is the layer we try to add and to make useful for the other spaces that have their making or manufacturing at their core. So it is in a way physical, but very distributed uh, so I think it's it's an advantage we're keeping uh, keeping in there. And maybe I'll give it to Bono for how we're specifically approaching this lobby. Yeah. So the lobby, I mean, the lobby in in the end incorporates all these objectives that we have. So I think it's definitely also uh, about the rather uh, like the circularity part because that's eventually if we want to reach the circularity goals, we also need to think about keeping those makers inside the city. But we also sense since the current issues in Amsterdam are very focused around housing and having enough space and the affordability of uh, of, the, of those spaces, we do think that a big part of the lobby will be also focused on that. So, I mean, what we're going to do with like the event, like we, we can't completely say in one of these lobbying last lobbying events we can't just have uh, uh someone say like okay we're going to completely change the whole system right it's, th this change is going to go gradually the only thing what we do like we, we record this event so it will there's a certain level of accountability by these politicians if they're saying something on stage that they kind of well we can always refer back to it and i think a bit more specific what we're trying to do with the lobby is to really come up with potential new ways of structuring this whole um like spatial development system um on and which would result in getting more affordable spaces so we have we've thought of ideas like we work in in Netherlands you have housing corporations that afford that uh, offer like affordable housing for people under a certain like uh, has a price gap but we don't have something like that for more for like professions or for like work so we're like there's been ideas of making social work corporations so that you can offer workspaces for like an affordable price which is partly state subsidized these are like new ideas new innovative uh concepts that we try to for example yeah but uh, that in these events we try to uh, uh come up with and see like is that something that the city government could embrace so that's so yeah i think that's the stage where we're at in this lobby yeah uh, Bono, hi. I have a question um, linked to that, but more specific, and maybe that uh, uh, is on the same vague of Francesco about tips, in the sense that uh, dealing with politicians is uh, sometimes difficult in the sense that they are attainable. You, you have difficulties to attract their attention, even though in your case, I understand that the the thematic of circularity, so the roles of makers is important. But if you have to share some practical tips to do to to other people, say, I would like to attract the attention of politicians. How could I do? What are the actions? One, of course, very evident is the mapping tools you have um, you have presented, and for me, it's this very. So, if you have other very small tips, for example, yeah, that you. 
you see that have worked and other maybe that haven't worked? I think making visible in the literal sense is very good. So the mapping is a very visual, visible tool that that uh, showcases these things easily. There's a lot of talk about it, but to show it plainly is impossible is important. Same with such an exhibition to show the people that are behind this making and what we consider the breadth of making. And uh, we we sent in this opinion piece to the uh, Amsterdam newspaper at Parole to really showcase. Okay, this is but the uh, municipality wants in the future, then these are the things that we need to do now to uh, work with that. So it's also really about um, tapping into the goals of a city. I think a lot of cities have good circular goals that they want to achieve, but there's often a gap in how they're gonna achieve that at the moment. So we're really trying to work with them to make real policy at the moment to fill that gap. What is the next step needed to actually get there? So that's really what we're focusing this lobby and these events to to showcase, hey, this is a step you can take and the next thing to actually get there before it's too late or these uh, structures are really away. And you have to get them back in in the future in 2050. Yeah. And maybe one addition to this, like I not just from the from this specific project, but like I also organize other events uh, at our venue uh, with politicians and, and, and other stakeholders. I think the most important thing on a very like specific level is just to like if you want to have your politicians be there and, and talk to you, you need to like kind of lure them in and see that there's something interesting for them. Either it's maybe there it's the current it's the current political like maybe there's elections coming up. So they want to like really show be on the stage and like really like, you know, give some good prospect to the to the city or um, really try to like phrase your invitation in such a way that it's really showing that there's something in it for them. Uh, and all, or and yeah also like adding to this that uh, the the reason why they would maybe participate would be that um they're really doing something for the city so like it's really almost playing on like a personal level um that it's worth it for them to also come um that's but i guess both what joe says and what i say i think those are like that, that together makes the makes it interesting for politicians yeah okay yeah it's um um and i'm curious about is there any participatory framework established by the municipality for example to have a, um open conversation with citizens about development plans or other city have the participatory budget as a tool to get in contact with the people do you have any of these uh, tool at the administratory level that will allows you to getting more direct communication with the policymaker or politicians. Do you know, Joe, if they do this also for like local, uh, I mean, entrepreneurs, but also like local makers, for example? Oof, there's a lot of things in place. I think there, yeah. you have, there's a lot of participation trajectories, which sometimes work, but also have, have been criticized. It's hard to tell because often a lot of people don't find these tools. Even for us, it's sometimes hard to see in which evening event or which way can you contact people so that there are some things in place but it's not always easy for especially for makers or people that just have a specific job or do something to add that on so that's also something we want to provide or we can do is to be that spokesperson to talk with them and uh, then for them in these uh, in these parts and to find the specific alleyways to to get to that uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing, but to, to quote a specific policy account at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I was just uh, wondering because maybe are one of the tools to tap into to, in order to, to step to the next uh, step, yeah. Um, I have another question that it seems uh, changing the, the, the subject, but actually is related, is about the school you are thinking about. Um, and I was, uh, uh, where, what will be the physical location where this uh, Centrino school uh, will take place? Will be in the schools, uh, in makerspace? Uh, will be, yeah, if you can tell us about uh, this idea. One of the, the, the things we tried out in, in this uh, last few months is to work with uh, 13 technasium schools here in and around Amsterdam to uh, uh, develop a specific course for them to get to know their neighborhood and the makers within that and to try to figure out how circularity fits in there and uh, make a prototype of a solution. So 
that was a prototyping to really see okay what is actually happening in my local environment and for uh, high school uh, kids to get in contact with practical making and practical education as a venue they might choose i think that's quite interesting so we're uh, not focusing on a physical school but to really have also these uh, this network of schools connected to us to uh, further that and as well hamse is a vocational school for wood and furniture and more that is uh, actively in the pro project so they're also really uh, involved in how that can stay in the city and how uh, such practical vacation can have a place in the city because that's also dwindling so these are the the physical aspects of it uh, at the moment and also the idea of giving access to to different uh, maker space the one of vag and the other of, of uh, yeah it's a way to for example if i want students will be will have access to those pl places to yeah, especially also the the lab and uh, the hamse lab and the vag uh, fab lab are really meant for the people that come out of maybe their preliminary uh, practical uh, education to still use the tools they've been trained on or to get to know new tools. So the starting professionals really try to uh, focus on there. So awareness and that opening up that avenue for younger people and then from for young professionals are really trying to see can they make use of the space if they go out of a, uh, a, food, si a food system. Uh, out of their school system i think that's that's how we try to tackle these parts in different stages of uh, becoming a maker can i jump in uh, carlotta yes i think yeah i wanted i wanted to ask i was reflecting about as you know we are we are in volume very focused on uh, how to have access uh, or how to deal uh, with uh, the physical uh, dimension of the city, you know, uh, I think that is also a, a, a topic, uh, Bono, you are working a lot uh, in your organization. So basically how to reclaim, uh, uh, you know, physical space uh, uh, for creative communities uh, where, uh, you know, the, the rent is super high, the real estate pressure is, is uh, extremely high. Uh, by the way, Paris is one of the most dense city in Europe, maybe the most dense in Europe and one of the most dense uh, in terms of urbanization. So um, I, I, I'm very, this is a, an introduction to my question to say that we are very sensi sensitive about this topic. And uh, I wanted to uh, uh, question, to, to let's say explore with you a little bit if you have different takes on this uh, problematic when it comes um, to the visibility of the, the maker ecosystem. No? Uh, for instance, in Amsterdam, you are talking about the lobbying. I understand that when you say lobbying, you also say make something that is invisible, make it visible and you know on the table uh, aware of which people and politicians are aware. Uh, our experience show that uh, um, uh, the the you know local production so for instance the maker uh, ecosystem is very powerful on one side because it's distributed basically it's, it's everywhere you know in the city almost everywhere you 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 almost have uh, you 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 almost can think about a uh, fifteen uh, uh, minutes by walk fab lab in any point uh, uh, of the city in which you could produce. Uh, I don't know, your furniture or repair your uh, electric uh, furniture. So this is very powerful, the distributedness, let's say, of the maker ecosystem. But the experience show also that uh, being distributed uh, also means uh, being uh, difficult to grasp, difficult to identify with, and uh, in the end, uh, very difficult to be visible, no? Um, so I would like to understand if uh, you are uh, facing similar challenges, you know, and uh, if uh, you are, uh, you have, I don't know, solutions uh, different from ours to, to cope with this. At, at some point in our case, we had the chance to say, okay, we have this distributed ecosystem, but also we want to have an institutional location 
uh, a unique place, you know, where we can send people in, you know, like, uh, okay, go to the Fab City Hub and from there, you will have access to distrib the distributed ecosystem. As in your case, you are focusing on having multiple space. Do, how do you deal with the, this topic of visibility? And just to conclude my question, I, I heard before uh, Thieu, I guess, saying something like, we are the spokesperson or we, we can be the spokesperson because indeed big institutions like the city council cannot deal with uh, 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 hundreds of actors now or hundreds of venues. So they need some somehow to simplify things to 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 have a, a unique visible spoke person. Uh, maybe yep. it's a huge question, but feel free to react and take I, any. I, I think you're you're exactly on the right track. What we're doing at the moment and launching soon is what we in Dutch we would call a verbond or a uh, gathering of all these. Uh, uh, organizations that have a stake in making in the city and ascribe to that same notion to really uh, publish the manifest of why we think it's important really based on what we've been talking to them and with them about and uh, provide this sort of unified idea of okay this is what we stand for as makers as a whole based on the circular goals so a lot anyone can add to it with the idea of okay this is needed for the city in the future um so we're uh, that will uh, will launch uh, very soon in terms of just having a centralized name and a centralized vision, but made up of these parties that all have their own space and spot and also their own voice within that. Okay, I have a reference for that. Maybe you know the Maker Smile in London, right? Have you ever heard? I've heard about it, yes. Yeah, because the, the, this is the idea of, you know, this uh, central branding website in which you can have access to. I will share the link in the chat, but feel free to go on with your answer. I don't know if you... No, I think that that is the, the thing of unifying under maybe not a new organization, but at least showcasing all these, the breadth of what's happening in Amsterdam under one uh, ideology or one uh, goal for the future. And a second part is that idea of which door can people just knock on and open. I think then, uh, especially uh, Waag and Hamse are really providing that space in terms of having this maker space already in the buildings. Uh, so yes, multiple location, but you can always knock on the door. And I think that's what we're really trying to prove and promote. And possibility of expanding that. Hamse is also looking into other avenues and they had to move their building uh, in a while. So. That, that way we're really looking where is these entry points for people to just knock on the door as well. Okay. And maybe like one small addition that is just that I think that a lot of the change that happens politically uh, comes from like, yeah, good connections, good stakeholder uh, management and like very clear uh, mobilization of the community itself. But also I think most of the change comes from the wider um, so social debate or like the 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 debate that's going on in the whole society so like i think there was in one of the la later events we had one of the makers saying like okay well it's not important to talk about today why we need the city so much why do we need to be in the city it's important for the city to know why we as makers need to be in there so i think mm -hmm. that's one of the one of the ideas also that like through all these visibility uh, and that's maybe we're at the start of this because I don't think the general public of Amsterdam is all, is all uh, individually saying like, oh, this is a super urgent topic and we need to like address this. But I think if there's a general awareness by all this, like the the, the citizens of Amsterdam, that mm -hmm. we need these local spaces. I think there is also going to be a political, like there's, it's going to be easier for politics to follow this because they have a, they have a they have, there's an urgency for them to to do something with it. Otherwise, they lose their uh, their voters. <laughs> yeah, of course. So uh, we should wrap up uh, Thieu and Bono, but I have a, a, a last uh, quick, but maybe a difficult question for you. I know that both of you work uh, with uh, an, org an organization that runs in, in different uh, case, uh, I mean, Thieu and Bono, but you run a, a physical uh, space, you know, uh, with different activities. So. Uh, let's say that in the audience, uh, we have uh, someone who is soon traveling to Amsterdam and, and wants uh, to visit uh, a significant venue to get to, uh, to know the social innovation ecosystem in Amsterdam, uh, which, which would be the, the one suggestion 
uh, you will uh, say you can just pick one place and not necessarily vague or pike uh, pack house the buyer sorry for the name which one uh, should be for you the place other to... than uh, than these spaces of vag and pack house another space that's interesting to visit yeah uh, that's, that's a very good question i uh, there's so Maybe. many would it yeah. be interesting to go to the public workspace, the one in East? Oh, yeah, is I think the Open Werkplatz in Oost is a very good space if you want to uh, work on machinery and they're uh, renting out machines uh, you know, with a low startup cost to uh, work on woodworking, metalworking, and other projects. There is, uh, if you want to go to more artistic making, I'm going to provide two because there's so many. Uh, <laughs> here in NDSM, there's a possibility to uh, go and check out all smaller workshops and studios of both makers and artists. And uh, there's, there's many more to see, but I think that's- uh, Let's that's see that uh, if, I, if someone is asking, we will give them your uh, email address. <laughs> if you, if oh, you... And look on the map, look on the Kumu map. Yeah, there's look there's on, on many the Kumu. interesting makers that uh, of have course, their- Of course, info yeah, there. Yeah. right. The answer is the Kumu I just yeah. shared in the chat. That's what I wanted to suggest. The good answer to maybe to Francesco was to give him a, or maybe a, a, a printed version of the Google map for the north of, of Africa. Course. Ah, yeah, good idea. This could be translated to a tourist map uh, to visit. Of make. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it won't all be open uh, all the time, but a lot uh, have their doors open to just knock and, uh, and see, especially yeah. if you have to want something to repair or to make. They're, uh, of they're course. Yeah, even better, an application where the map of Kumo is linked to. <laughs> yeah, a lot of ideas, but uh, <laughs> we really need to close, wrap up here uh, as uh, one hour goes by very quickly. Uh, as always, it, it was super interesting for us to have you as a guest. Uh, we are exploring every episode, a different city. Next stop will be in Barcelona. Uh, with the, the next edition of Fab City Up Voices. Uh, don't forget to check out the Centrino website in the upcoming days because we will republish this uh, recording uh, with the references of what we just discussed. It. Also, you can subscribe and check out volumes.media for the podcast and other contents on creative and productive hubs. And once again, thank you very much for all the attendees and the participants, and especially to Carlotta and Thieu and Bono to uh, make the time for the session. And of course, uh, thanks to Ayak for the support in communication and to the whole consortium uh, group of Centrino. Again, thanks. Thank you very much and see you soon for the next edition, uh, right. to everyone. Bye. Bye, Thieu. Thank Bye. you. Thanks a lot. See you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye.